Good morning and welcome in to this um, Stamping Starters, the second of these Stamping Starters Back to Basics and Facebook Lives. So whether you're watching me live today, do come on and say hello, whether you're watching on Catch Up or whether you're catching these on YouTube. Let me just try and get these wires out of the way, particularly with the sun shining in the uh, window. They just cast so many shadows. Um, so anyway, my name is Helen Jennings um, and I'm a Stamping Up demonstrator based here in the UK. I have been a Stamping Up demonstrator for nearly six years now, um, but have been card making a lot longer than that, around about 17 years, that sort of time. So over those years, I've picked up a few tricks and tips. And the idea of this Stamping Starters group is to try and encourage people that are just starting out um, in this hobby or just want to build their confidence a little bit and learn a little bit more about, well, the art, really. Um, so I do not claim to know everything by any means. So if you have tricks and tips that you've learned along the way that I don't cover, please do pop on and share those on here. It would be lovely um, to hear what you've learned as well, because that's what it's about. It's about creating a community that is learning together. So today, this second video is about ink. Obviously, stamps, ink and paper are the basics of, um, of what I do. Um, I am a stamping up demonstrator, so all of my um, inks and things I'm, I'm gonna show you are ones that are currently available um, in the stamping up catalogues. Um, but a lot of what I say will um, hopefully um, be relevant for other makes of inks and things if you've got those in your stash as well and obviously it goes without saying if you are based here in the UK and there are any of these things that you think you would like to add to your growing collection um, then do either visit my online store or get in touch with me and I would love to help you to do that to build up your collection so let's talk ink there are this i think possibly is one of the most confusing things for people that are just starting out the what ink is what what do i use for what why do i want that one as opposed to that one um so i will try and um sort of get rid of a little bit of the mystery around that this morning i'm sure i won't answer all the questions if you do have any questions do pop on and ask them even if you're watching on replay um and um I would I would come in and endeavour to answer them, answer them, or at least find out the answer to them for you. Um, and if you've got other friends that are just starting out on this journey, then please do share this video with them as well. I'd love to have them joining this community wherever they are. So inks, as I say, I am a stamping up demonstrator, so I am going to have stamping up inks. Um, let's start with the basics first. Let's pipe these, pile these ones up to one side for now and let's have a look at these. I've got two colour ink pads in front of me here. Um, just like when we were talking about cards last week and if you've not seen that video do go and catch that up. You can either catch that up on my Stamping Starters page. Um, I have linked it on my Lover Ducky page and you will also find it on my YouTube channel. Um, but last week we were talking about paper and card and um, I was showing you that we have, seeing if I can just find it, and we have our little swatch and, swatch and we have 50 shades of card. Well, for each of those shades of card, we have an ink pad that goes with it. Um, so we, but obviously we don't have, we don't have a basic Whisper White or a basic very vanilla ink pad, um, but we do have a craft Whisper White ink got out for you and I'm going to have to go and hunt of one of those in a minute for you. Um, so we do have the 50 different colours. Um, so 40 in our standard range and then five, lot, two lots of five in colours. So 50 different colours in our um, classic stamping pad. And the Stamping Up's classic stamping pad is a dye-based ink. Um, so a dye-based ink... Um, well, when you stamp it, it does soak into the card. It dries quite quickly. Um, because it is dye-based, because it is predominantly water-based, 
you can use that same ink you can um, watercolor with it you can add you know put some on a little block add some water to it watercolor with it you can use water to drag the color out of the stamps that you've just stamped and we will be going through lots of different coloring techniques and sort of taking these a step further in later videos today this is just an introduction to the different sorts so you get a whole range of colors so whatever color you want so you know if you're stamping a whole load of flowers and you want a pink flower and a purple flower and a yellow flower and you want green leaves and we have all of the colors to um, do all of those things so a huge range of colors they're predominantly water-based when you stamp them they do sort of soak into the card um, which is what they're intended to do you can add water to them to watercolor you can do all of those sorts of things with them so they are our workhorses you can use your sponges and you can sponge with them and you can add you know and and the ink the refill inks that you get so each of our color pads you can also get an ink refill for so you can top up your ink pad and keep it going for years and years and years and that also that same ink that's in the ink pad is, is also water based and you know you can do lots of techniques with that as well so they are our workhorses these these are the backbone of our craft room um, all of those different colors and you know if you're just starting out people sort of say to me what color should I go for that depends on your colors and that may sound a little bit silly but um, for some people they predominantly love blues and purples and those sorts of things so they're the colors you're going to go to but you may be somebody that absolutely loves different shades of green they're going to be the colors you're going to go to so make sort of have a think about what your colors what are the what are the clothes that you what, what color is predominantly in your wardrobe what color is predominantly in your house and round about you <coughs> if you were to pick up a bunch of flowers in the supermarket what would be the colors that you go for those are the colors to go for in your stamp pads initially as well because those are your colors and they're the ones that you're going to use predominantly it actually takes hard work to work against your natural colours and to go, oh, I'm going to do something completely different today. I'm going to use orange and red um, if you're really not an orange and red person. So, dye-based ink pads, the, the, the backbone, the basics of what we do. So we use those to stamp with, <coughs> we use those to, um, as I say, watercolour with, um, to sponge with all of those sorts of things we use our dye based um, ink pads that are predominantly water based and then we come to our little stack of more <coughs> um, specialized ink pads so here I've got a memento a stays on and a versa mark and if you are serious about card making <coughs> at some point you are going to want to have these three in your collection now it perhaps depends what techniques and things you are starting out on as to which one of these you go for first and you build them up um, but they are staples really they're staples in your craft drawer so what do they all do let's start with Versamark because that probably is the one that's very different from the other two so Versamark is what they call a watermark stamp pad um, I'm just going to see I'm going to use that one because I've not cleaned that one and it's um, and it is sorry it will have some black ink on and I don't want it to have black ink on I'm going to take this little piece of green card just here and I don't know how well this is going to show up and I'm just going to take this little tree stamp and this is um, from one of the Christmas sets this is the um, is called nature's beauty so it's got lovely little deer and um, fox and rabbits and it's also got these background trees and things so versamark they call it a watermark um, stamp pad so what does it mean by watermark so if i just take this um, ink pad just take my stamp and i'm just tap 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 and stamp it and inking it up and we'll go into in a further video we'll go into a bit more in stamping techniques as well um, so i'm not worrying particularly about those today that's something that we'll focus on a bit more in the future and i don't know how if this is going to show up i can see it 
can you just about pick up in the background you have got a, just a very faint image and almost as it dries it becomes a little bit clearer so that's not ever so clear and I know that the cell that's better there we are so that is just literally stamping with that ink pad so although I mean mine is a bit grubby now when you get these brand new they're lovely and white and pristine um, invariably as you use them they pick up colour and all sorts of things um, it doesn't really affect their use particularly um, but yeah that, that's just using it as a watermark so you can just use that stamp pad and put like a faint watermark on a, to make a background paper all those sorts of things so it is really useful but that isn't predominantly what we use our Versamarks for and there may be people that have been stamping for years that didn't even know that you could do that and um, because the thing that we tend to use our Versamark for is when we are heat embossing because the thing about Versamark is the mixture in it, it is really quite sort of sticky and gloopy and again you can get ink refills for these and it contains quite a lot of glycerin so it is a sticky ink um, and it stays wet for quite a little while and what that means is that you can use this for your heat embossing and again heat embossing is something we'll go into more detail in future weeks but heat embossing is when you throw on some embossing powder so really fine ground up plastic emboss um, that creates embossing powder you sprinkle it on um, and then tap off any excess and because the ink is sticky it grabs the powder so wherever the ink is stamped is where it's going to grab the powder and then you melt the powder and you get an embossed image and I will show you one of those in a bit of a close-up in a minute because I'm going to compare that to another type of ink pad. Um, so that, that's what we predominantly use our Versamark for. So once you treat yourself to a heat tool and um, some embossing powders you're going to want um, a watermark stamp pad and Versamark is I think without doubt um, the most popular one on the market whether you're within stamping up or without um, good morning Leslie I don't know whether I've said good morning to you um, lovely to see you oh who's saying that they can't find my live this morning let me just check Leslie's found it let me see apologies while I just Let me check and see where I've gone live then. Where have I gone live on that? <laughs> um, oh, let me refresh my stamping starters page to see if I can find it. Because I've just had a comment through from somebody that they can't find the live. So apologies, people. I'm just going to refresh that. And it may be that I could share it. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm definitely live on the stamping starters. Let's see if I can share that to my lover ducky page and then i what i will do later is i will also i'll share the whole thing anyway if that's not possible it's being a bit less slow and chunky um apologies um so yes versa mark so you can use it to do your watermarking on the background so just get a watermark image or you can use it to um, do your heating bossing. And as I say, that is the thing that the majority of us use our Versamark for. That's the reason you're really, really going to want one in your... Um... When you're going to want one in your um... arsenal. Excuse me while I'm just as if I've gone quiet. I'm just trying to share this video into my lover ducky page. This is when you need an assistant. You see, you need a glamorous assistant on hand to um, to help you with these things. It's wanting to um, post onto another page that I manage that wouldn't be at all appropriate. Let's try posting that and then hopefully um, the other ladies will be able to see. Okay, so Versamark, water marking and heat embossing. What else have we got here? We've got a Memento ink. Now a Memento, um, so the Tuxedo Black Memento ink um, is a, 
black ink and you can use it for stamping sentiments or anything that you want to do in black. You can get away with sponging it and doing those little things because it is a fade resistant dye based ink. So just like these are dye based inks, so is this one. Um, but the reason that we have this one very definitely and very firmly in our arsenal is because um, we have these gorgeous, gorgeous um, solvent based um, marker pens so the um, alcohol based ink the stamping blends so these are alcohol based ink pads now one of the important things to remember about ink pads is that you always always if you're doing coloring with something um, you so you need to stamp your image and then you're going to color it in with something you always always need to mix water with your alcohol so these are alcohol based pens. So we need a water based black pad to stamp our outlines or you can use one of these as well for most of most of those won't, won't blend. Occasionally you'll get one that will smudge a little bit but most of our normal pads you can use to stamp your outlines as well but um, in terms of black you want a memento. Now what happens if you don't use a memento if you were to use for instance the ink we're going to look at next which is our stays on ink. Our stays on ink is a solvent based ink so that's alcohol based ink pad. So the lovely thing about our stamping blends is when you colour with them the colour is the, the pigment in the pen the colour bit of the pen is mixed up with alcohol to make it run so if you imagine that you've got old-fashioned powder paints you used to have to mix them with something in order to to paint them so normally we'd mix them up with water and then you'd be able to paint with them so imagine that your pigment is your powder paint you need to mix it with something in order to paint with it or color with it so in the stamping blends they've mixed that color with alcohol and what that means is when that you're colouring with them, um, that's why you don't get the lines and the stripes and things that you get with normal felt tips and markers, because the alcohol blends together um, and sort of creates a really lovely, smooth, blended image on your colours. Now, if you use an alcohol outline, that will also blend together in this lovely alcoholy mix um, and you will find that your outline will smudge and you'll get sort of grey yucky bits around the edge of your image which you don't want. Now that doesn't happen if you mix your alcohol with water because the alcohol in the blends doesn't blend with the water in the ink and that means that the ink stays where it is and the colours stay where they are, they don't merge together. Now the same is going to be true in a minute when we talk about the stays on. So if you're using, you just want black stamping, you want to do black stamping on your um, sentiments and those sorts of things, you know, you can really go with either the Memento or the Jet Black stays on. That's entirely up to you. The Jet Black stays on is possibly blacker um, because it is Jet Black. Whereas this one is Tuxedo Black. Um, so it is probably a stronger black. Um, but just for basic stamping and things and, you know, doing sentiments and those sorts of things, it really is personal choice. It really doesn't make any difference. But if you're colouring with your stamping blends, you absolutely need your memento because these are alcohol-based, solvent-based pens. That is a water-based ink. Always, always mix your alcohol and water. So as I said, the opposite applies with your stays on. Um, if you're going to use these beautiful ink pads and you're going to watercolour with them, you want an ink pad, an ink outline that isn't going to be affected by the water. This one is. So add too much water and that one will start to blend out, which you might want it to do. But if you want a crisp outline that doesn't move anywhere when you add water, it stays on that you need. So when you're watercolouring, doing anything that you're adding lots of water to or sort of moisture or perhaps even, you know, using your watercolour pens and adding blends and those sorts of things, you're better off with your stays on. Now you'll notice when you open your stays on ink pad, you get your lid and then you get this little plastic layer here that says on it, and you can see it better actually probably when the, um, 
when it's in place it says protective inner cover do not discard do not discard um, and what some people will do what I've done on some of my ink pads is they'll put a couple of dimensionals in there so that it actually sticks in the lid so that you've still got it um, but the reason that you've got this is because it is solvent based ink one of the really lovely things about anything solvent based is that it dries really quickly so alcohol evaporates really quickly which is why we use alcohol um, rubbing alcohol in spritzers and those sorts of things because it dries so much quicker than water um, which is really useful in some aspects but with your ink pads if you leave that lid off it will dry out really quickly once again you can get refills for them but you don't want to have to be topping them up every five minutes so ensure that you keep both your outer lid and your inner lid in place because that just helps to protect it from drying out um, Stasol also has quite a strong smell to it and some people absolutely love it and some people don't like it um, I wouldn't recommend if you do like it sniffing it too much it is solvent based and I'm sure that that can't be good for you so don't become a Stazon sniffer um, but yes your Stazon ink so that is your solvent based ink so if you're watercoloring doing anything that you're adding water to and you don't want that image to move then your Stazon ink pad is the one for you. So we've had our dye-based coloured inks, we've had our Memento dye-based black ink, we've had our Stazon solvent-based ink, and we've had our Versamark sticky ink. Now the other ink I've got on my table is one that came out in our autumn, winter and um, Christmas catalogue. Um, and this, like our white craft ink, and let me see, if I can reach a white craft base ink. Both our white um, craft ink and these new inks that are in the autumn winter catalog are pigment inks. Now, for these inks, think more sort of paint because they are quite gloopy. I got one, yes. I'm sure there is one on my desk somewhere, but I may well have buried it. If you could see my desk, it is very likely buried. But here we have a stamping, um, stamping up craft stamping pad. So Whisper White Craft Pigment Ink. And this is also, uh, um, this is a shimmery pigment ink. So these two ink pads are pigment ink. Now pigment ink is, as I say, much thicker, much gloopier. And whereas we talked about the dye-based inks sinking into the card, the pigment inks don't, they sit on the surface of the card. For that reason, they take a lot longer to dry, um, so they can take quite a little while to dry. And um, These aren't too bad, actually. Um, some pigment inks take ages to dry. These aren't too bad. You can sometimes heat set your pigment inks, but they do recommend, particularly with this shimmery one, that you don't because um, it can it takes off some of the luster and it is really sort of shimmery and sparkly and it takes away some of that if you heat it. So they recommend that you don't actually heat this one, but you can heat um, pigment inks. You can use them much as you use your Vertimark to put um, embossing powder on, um, but why would you want to cover up silver sparkly with embossing powder that doesn't make any sense to me but um you could if you wanted to because they sit on the surface they're that bit gloopier um you can they stay wet longer they are good for um if you want to do any heat embossing so if you haven't got your versamark to hand then your your pigment inks are a very good um, substitute um, they will because they sit on the top of the card um, I'm just having a look round to see if I have any black card. Because the ink <clears throat> sits on top of the card rather than sinking into the card, um, it does mean that it shows up better on dark coloured cards. So, you know, it stamps beautifully onto white card. Everything stamps beautifully onto white card. But if it sort of stays truer to its colour. So if, for instance, you were stamping onto crumb cake card with a dye-based ink, the um, colour that the ink looks to the eye will be slightly different because it will have sunk into the card and sort of almost blended with the colour of that card. Whereas with, with pigment inks, they um, because they sit on the top of the card, they hold their colour better. So this is a piece of black card 
and some of this silver pigment ink. And can you see how that sort of sits on the top there? I don't know how well that's showing up. It's really pretty and shimmery and shiny on that black card. And you do get, oh, it's really shimmery, it's beautiful. Um, and you do get almost sort of like a thick, nearly 3D sort of aspect to it. You can sort of see that it sort of stands out from the top of the card. Um, so yeah, so that's the silvery one. This is the white one and very similar. Um, it is a quite thick gloopy ink. You might find that you need to refill these a little bit more regularly than you would your standard inks. Um, you can with some pigment inks and I've not, not tried them with this. Yes, this one does say you can heat set them onto fabrics. And um, so if you're stamping with pigment inks onto fabric, you can heat set it. I've not seen what happens if we try and do that with the um, shimmery one, but um, maybe worth having a play with at some point, um, because if, particularly if you were doing any little Christmas bags or anything. So you can heat set onto fabric with pigment inks, you can stamp onto wood, you can do all sorts of things. So, so because they sit on the surface rather than soak in, um, they are good for those sorts of things. So there's a, there's a real benefit in having some pigment inks you will see that they have sort of the normal standard white um, pigment ink has quite a sort of chalky finish to it um, and actually in itself that can be quite um, quite a nice technique if particularly with black card if you want to make a sort of chalkboard effect <coughs> um, card you know if you wanted to do a card that looked a bit like a blackboard or a chalkboard in the kitchen or those sorts of things it's quite useful. I don't know how wet this ink pad is. Let's um, there we are. That's the white one stamped onto that black card. So you can see how it really stands out. Now, what I wanted to show you to compare, I said earlier that I will show you something to compare. A couple of weeks ago in a Facebook Live, I made this little box. Um, and these background, um, little swirls in the corner just here. I stamped those with Versamark, sprinkled on my um, embossing powder and I heat embossed those ones. So you can feel that they have got like a 3D feel to them when you feel them, touchy feel them, um, and they're sort of shiny when the light hits them and those sorts of things. So that was Versamark with um, embossing powder. This Enjoy just here, I used the new gold pigment um, ink, the sh um, shimmery pigment ink, the gold version. And actually it really is quite gloopy and quite thick and it has got sort of a, a texture to it. You, if you run your finger over it, you can feel the sort of 3D-ness of it almost where that ink is sitting on the top of the card rather than sinking into it. So I thought that was just useful. You know, you've got your, your Versamark and your um, heat embossing and you've got your pigment ink. So those different inks. So very quick recap, dye based ink, your workhorse that you can stamp with, um, sponge with, watercolour with, do all of those things. Fabulous. We all need them. Pick the colours you love, stock them up. Um, have lots of them and you can do lots of rainbow coloured projects, whatever colours you like. Um, your Versamark is your watermark um, stamp pad so you can do watermarking on bits of card but you can also use it to sprinkle on your embossing powder and we shall look at that in you know, a bit more detail in weeks to come. Your Memento is another dye based ink, this is your black dye based ink um, and you always use that if you're using your alcohol markers to colour in and obviously we should look at all those things in, in future videos. Your stays on is your solvent based ink and you always use your solvent based ink if you're doing any watercolour type techniques. So anything that you're adding a lot of moisture into the into the equation or even if you're stamping on to damp card this is the ink for you and again we should look at watercolouring and things in future videos and then your pigment inks. So our classic Whisper White and then these new um, 
twinkly ones that we have in the autumn winter catalogue. So your pigment inks that rather than sinking into the card sit on the top of the card, take a little bit longer to dry um, but that you can also stamp onto fabrics and heat set them and all sorts of fun things. So that's a sort of basic run through of the different inks. I hope that has helped and not confused you further. Um, but as I say, in the weeks to come, we will go, you know, through the different techniques that we use. You'll see them popping up time and time again as we talk about um, the different techniques. You know, for this one we're using stays on, for this one we're using memento, for this one we're using our classic stamping pads, um, this one we're using Versamark. So just to give you an introduction to all of those, um, but as I say, certainly you're going to want to collect your beautiful colours of dye-based inks. And at some point, you're going to want to add to your arsenal a stays on, a memento and a versamark. Because when you start doing any of the other techniques, they really come into their own. And the pigment inks are really fun. And why wouldn't you want to have those as well? So, as I say, if you're here in the UK and any of that interests you, um, do head on over to my shop. I shall make sure you've got a link at the top of the video or get in touch with me. If you have any questions, do post them. I've not seen any pop up. Um, and I shall post this to my YouTube video, uh, to my YouTube channel um, as well once we've finished um, and do share it with anybody else that you think might be interested. So thank you for joining me in this second of our um, Facebook Lives. And I'll be back next week. I can't remember what we're looking at next week. But um, I will be back. And I hope that it will be informative. Um, oh, adhesives. We're going to look at adhesives next week. So we're going to be looking at sticking things and what we use to stick things um, next week. So that's another um, really useful basic. So we've done paper, we've looked at ink, next week we're going to be looking at adhesives. So do come and join me then um, and get into a sticky mess with me and um, I look forward to seeing you. <laughs>